No way. I did not think this was possible. I did not think this would ever happen. But thanks to AT&T and MLS, your favorite AT&T influencer, which is me, have highlights of every single nominee for this season's AT&T Goal of the Year. And I'm so pumped up about it, as you can tell, because I love breaking down goals and talking about them and dissecting them and then watching them again and then marveling at their greatness again and then watching them again. Anyway, after you finish checking all these goals out, I need you to go to MLSsoccer.com slash GOT and vote on who you think should win. Also, I'll put the link in the description in case you can't remember it. Also, you can vote until November 11th, and the winner is going to be announced on November 13th. And if you want to continue this conversation on Twitter about who had the best goal in MLS this season, tweet at me using the hashtag ATTGOTY, all right? All right, let's get to the first goal. Okay, hold up, time out. This goal is great on its own, but it's magical once you understand the circumstances. DC were tied with Orlando 2-2. It was in the 95th minute of the game. DC's goalkeeper had pushed up for the corner kick to try and win it and get all three points, and the ball broke Orlando's way. So it looked like they were gonna go on to win the game or at least get a draw, and Wayne Rooney gets on his horse, tracks the player down, makes a game-saving tackle, then picks up his head and drops a dime at the back post where the smallest player on the field wins a header and DC wins the game 3-2. And we could argue that that was the moment that turned DC's season around where they truly believed that they could be a special team this season. And it's just, it's just unbelievable. It's so good, so good. All right, who's next? Now it's 32, missed by Wilson. Chance here, oh and it's 1-0 Portland. Portland Timbers lead inside Dick Sporting Goods. Okay, what I absolutely love about this goal, which reminds me of something Dennis Bergkamp did for Arsenal against Newcastle many years ago, is the thought process before the ball gets to him. He knows exactly what he wants to do when he gets it, and then he executes the perfect touch and movement afterwards, and then maybe even more impressively, he has the calmness and coolness and composure to bury it past one of the best goalkeepers that America has ever produced in Tim Howard. So this is a super goal and I love it and I can't wait to see what's next. Spoil the ending of the storybook start. Alfonso Davies, oh! Alfonso Davies! Does just that. And this is just one example of why the 17-year-old became the most expensive transfer in MLS history when Bayern Munich paid $22 million for him. He's got great feet, vision, balance, power. He loves to get forward, but will do the necessary defending as well, which I love about him. And from what I've heard, since I don't know him at all, he's got a great attitude, which includes a huge desire to become even better, which means when you take all of these things into consideration, he's got all of the necessary components to have a very bright future. So, of course, I wish him the best of luck. But we have to move on to the next goal, so who's next? The flick now by Sebastian Jovinko. Oh, it's a beauty! Well, that's why he's here. Fourth goal of the campaign for Sebastian Jovinko. Okay. Rule number one when defending one of the best players ever in league history. You can't give him that much space to pick up his head and let him do whatever he wants. And yes, I know what you're thinking, Minnesota United defenders. He's on his weak foot. It's fine. Let him shoot from outside of the box. It's probably going to go over. But it didn't go over. It went in the back of the nets. So that was your first mistake because Sebastian Jovinko doesn't have a weak foot. You should never sleep on his weak foot because he doesn't have one. So if you don't close him down, you're going to get punished. Okay? You learned that the hard way. Who's next? Marshall is in. It's gonna fall for Ibrahimovic. Oh, come on! Come on! All right, hold on. First off, this is another goal that is super on its own. But the circumstances surrounding it take it from here to here because this was Laton's first ever game with the Galaxy. He came on as a sub with his team down 3-1 in the first ever LA Derby, also known as El Trafico, and I love that nickname. And he scored two goals in the last 15 minutes to help the Galaxy win 4-3, and this was the goal that tied it up. So the magnitude of this goal and what it meant for his club and what it meant to this rivalry and what it meant for Zlatan to cement his legendary status right from the start of his time in MLS, it's just the guy lives for the big moments, and I bow down to his greatness. Speaking of which. It's spectacular from Zlatan Ibrahimovic. A magical milestone moment for one of the game's greatest strikers. 
I knew this one was gonna be included. I could feel it because this was the 500th goal of Zlatan's career and you knew it wasn't gonna be a simple tap in or a penalty. It had to be something spectacular and he delivered something spectacular because that's how he rolls. Also, this goal really highlights what makes him great for me. First, it's the confidence to even try this. Second, it's his spatial awareness with regard to where he is on the field, his movement to create the space in the first place, where the goalkeeper is, where the defender is, and just his anticipation overall. It's just ridiculous. Third, it's the execution, because it's one thing to see it and have that vision, and it's another thing entirely to pull it off, because you need composure, athleticism, and sublime technique, and he has all of those. So what a legend this guy is. Also, this is gonna be tough to choose which one of these goals is my favorite. It's already hard, but there's more to this list, so let's check it out. Who's next? Yosinio. Nice move there. What a shot by Yosinio, one of the union. That's how you do it. I mean, what? Did you see those techers by the 33-year-old Brazilian? I think Bastian Schweinsteiger is still trying to catch him. Also, again, I can't emphasize enough how hard it is at times to keep your composure after you make a good move and then finish off the play. Now, I've seen a lot of players, myself included, unfortunately, just bottle it a bit in those moments after doing so much of the hard work already and then getting tense when it was time to shoot and then putting it wide or putting it over or putting a feeble effort right at the goalkeeper instead of relaxing and burying it in the side netting like El Sino did. So what a finish. Anyway, let's keep this thing going. Back post, headed away. The shot! What a golazo! Sensational stuff! Off the rebound, can tie! <laughs> This is such a good goal. And not only because it hits the top corner, but because of the technique. He doesn't even need to swing as hard as he can. He just hits it in the right spot and it does exactly what he intended. And I'm not sure there is a better feeling than that. So kids, if you're watching at home, take notes of Katai's technique because this is a special finish. So anyway, who do we have now? Ball in by Jimmy Matronda. Golazzo! I think out of respect, I have to vote for this as my goal of the year, right? I mean, we share the same name and he plays for my former club, so it makes a lot of sense. Also, he hit this shot a ton. There is so much power on it, and he definitely caught the keeper off guard, who I think was expecting to see a cross. So a hat tip to Jimmy for recognizing the opportunity and making it happen. I love it. Next. The, box, the ball gets away for Nick. Quanzette picks it up. He fouls. Pietti! Goal! Nacho Pietti! Okay, first off, I love Piotti, and if I was gonna rock the jersey of anyone currently playing in MLS, he's in my top three because he can do it all, he's a great leader, and he loves scoring big goals. However, because the sporting goalkeeper gets his hands on this one, I don't think it's as special as some of the others. I feel like the ball has to hit the net unimpeded, but this was the game winner against one of the best clubs in MLS, so it definitely deserves our respect. I just don't think it's going to win, though I respect it. Anyway, who's next? Picked up here by Darwin Quintero. And still Quintero! He is irrepressible! Ever since he made the move from Club America, Quintero has been a huge bright spot for Minnesota United, scoring 11 goals and notching 12 assists in 27 appearances, and this goal is a perfect example why. He's never rattled. He stays cool, calm, and composed as he looks for a way to get a shot off, and thankfully for him and his club, he's talented and quick enough to make it happen. So I cannot wait to see him dicing defenders up next season in Minnesota's incredible new stadium. Anyway, now who do we got? Savarino, Rusnak calling for the ball. There it is, what time, what a goal! What a strike by Albert Rusnak! So yes, this feels very similar to Katai's goal in terms of technique and how he doesn't have to swing hard, but swing correctly to make this ball do exactly what he wants it to do. However, for me, the genius part about this goal is the peak he takes over his shoulder to see where the defender is before he hits it, which means he's already positioned his body to be in a good spot and have his feet exactly where he wants them and have his mind ready to hit it first time. And these decisions, by the way, have already been made in a split second. So he takes a peek to see if he has to adjust, recognize that he doesn't have to adjust at all and then looks back at the ball and buries it so for me that's just that's a world-class finish so can we end the video here is that no we got more all right let's keep this going into the 18 flicked out Shut up! Yes! just what the doctor
And would you look at that, it's another fantastic piece of technique, but I love the combination play and when players make the game look easy, and these three guys at this particular moment made the game look very easy because they did the simple things very, very well and their movement off the ball was very good and they were alert and ready for the opportunity when it presented itself. It's just too bad that Orlando City didn't have more of these moments as a team this season because they definitely needed about 75 more of these. Anyway, next up is... Just outside of here for this corner for Morales. Oh, it was a fine volley, and what a strike from Tinnerholm! Full-blooded! Again, are you seeing a theme here, everyone? That power comes from proper technique, and this was superb technique, which led to a high-quality finish by Tinnerholm. However, I do question the defending here a bit. I mean, how is this guy this wide open on a corner kick? Now, of course, fair play to Tinnerholm for burying it with purpose, but this defending needs to be looked at. Anyway, can we keep this going, please? I want to keep this going. I don't want these goals to ever end. Played the 16th quarter of the night. Short! Trap! The choice, are you kidding? First off, this is a bombazo. So take a bow, Will Trap. Second, this was a shot from someone who was like, you know what? We were down 2-1 to Orlando. We just tied it up 2-2. It's an injury time. So I'm going to swing from right here and see what happens. And what happened was the game winner in the 91st minute, which was probably the best goal of Will Trapp's career, if I can speak for him. And that must feel pretty good. Anyway, do we have any more left? We do? Last, last one? Last one. Let's get it. In for Carlos Vela. Vela taking the attempt. Oh, what a goal again. Carlos Vela. We've seen him do that time and time again already with LA. No, no, uh-uh, this dude is a cheat code. If he gets in this spot on the field, he doesn't even need to look up. He settles it and curls it back post, and 99% of the time it hits the back of the net, which always, always reminds me of the same goal that Gio Dos Santos scored against the US in the 2011 Gold Cup Final, and I'm trying not to remember it, but this brings up old feelings and I get sad. It's such a great play though, and I love that Carlos Vela is in the league. He is such a special player. He makes everybody around him better, he makes his team better, he makes the league better, and I'm happy he's here. Anyway, that is it. Those are the goals, so which one is your favorite? Mine is the first one, Luciano Acosta's, but only because of everything surrounding it. The situation, the hustle and determination and quality from Rooney, the header itself, the celebration. It's just one of those plays where you'll never forget where you were when you saw it. However, the same could be said for Zlatan's first goal for the Galaxy, that was just as magical, and it was in the first ever derby between the Galaxy and LAFC, so I'm torn. Ah! You guys aren't gonna like me for this, but I'm gonna say they're tied, they're tied for first. Which means I'm voting twice, baby, once for each. So let me know who you thought was the best down below, and then go vote. The link is in the description, and a big shout out again to AT&T and MLS for letting me use the highlights. This was fun, and I hope we can do it again. Later.